Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing a conceptual overview of series, parallel, and short circuit conditions in an electrical circuit. This will provide you with the basic background knowledge you need to assemble simple circuits, and will give a conceptual overview of how electric current flows in a circuit. So to begin with, I'll introduce you to the devices we have available for this experiment and for this demonstration. Two 20-watt halogen light bulbs, which are effectively equivalent to regular incandescent light bulbs. They have a tungsten filament and they behave in basically the same way. Some alligator clips for connecting circuit elements together, and a DC regulated power supply set to an output voltage of 10 volts and a current limit of 5 amps. So what we're going to do today is uh, start off by demonstrating a basic simple circuit with one power supply and one light bulb. I'll take one of the wires, one of the alligator clips here, and I'll connect it to one of the pins of the light bulb. What we have in this condition is called an open circuit. This is a circuit where the supply feeder, uh, supply feeder conductors are not connected to the load and no path is present on which current can flow. As you can see, no current is flowing and no work is being done in the light bulb. If I take the black uh, negative lead and I connect it to the other pin of the light bulb like so, the light bulb lights up indicating that uh, work is being done, energy is being dissipated as heat and light, and current is being drawn from the power supply. At this present moment, 1.55 amps are being drawn from the power supply. Now in this condition, the light bulb is dissipating heat, there's voltage being dropped across the light bulb, 10 volts to be exact, and the filament has increased in temperature greatly. So I'm going to disconnect this light bulb. As you can see, current is no longer flowing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a second light bulb and I'm going to introduce this into the circuit. Now when I connect the negative side to this light bulb, you can see that nothing happens. That's because this is still an open circuit. No current is able to flow through this bridge, this air gap between the two light bulbs. I can rectify that situation by taking an alligator clip and connecting this pin of this light bulb to this pin of this light bulb. Now, as you can see, both light bulbs are lighting up, albeit more dimly. Now, here's a few things that we should note here. Current is flowing from, in, well, I should say conventional current is flowing from the positive output of the power supply through the first light bulb, directly into the second light bulb, and then back through the negative conductor to the negative supply from the power supply. In this situation, we have what's called a series circuit connected. A series circuit is any circuit where current flows out of the node or output of one element in the circuit directly into the node or input of a second element or another element in the circuit. You can connect multiple devices in series in an electrical circuit. But one of the fundamental principles, Kirchhoff's voltage law, states that the total sum of all voltages around a loop must equal zero. This power supply is supplying 10 volts and each of these light bulbs is dropping a specific amount of voltage, that is subtracting a certain amount of voltage, to total up to 10 volts. Since there are two light bulbs of equivalent nature and of equ equivalent resistance connected together, we can infer that each light bulb is going to be dropping 5 volts or half of the voltage supplied to the circuit. Let me get a multimeter and show you that. Here's a multimeter, and I'm going to measure across this circuit element, this light bulb. As you can see, we have 4.95 volts, or about 5 volts, being dropped across it. Can you predict what the voltage is going to be across this light bulb? Well, since the total voltage is 10 volts, and we're probably dropping a little bit of voltage across the wires, we can see that this bulb is dropping a comparable voltage, around 4.6 volts. These are most likely slightly different because the filaments are manufactured maybe in different factories or in different batches. But the fundamental idea is between these two bulbs, we have a total sum of about 10 volts. So the light bulbs are connected in series right now. I'm going to disconnect that series connection. And you see, as, as we said before, we've created an open circuit condition. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect just one light bulb. So now we've gone back to having just one connected. Now did you notice any significant difference between the brightness? The previous configuration had a much lower brightness and this has a much higher brightness. That's because the voltage across each bulb is greater when you have just one bulb connected directly to the power supply than when you have two bulbs in series. 
and thus the amount of heat generated in the bulb, and thus the light output, is greater when there's only one bulb connected. This being said, there is a configuration we can choose in which both light bulbs have the full 10 volts placed across them. That means both light bulbs will be full brightness, but we also have both of them active at the same time. This is called a parallel configuration. So what we're going to do to create a parallel configuration is we're going to take one alligator clip, connect one side of the alligator clip to the positive of this light bulb that's already connected to the power supply, and we're going to connect it to the other light bulb. You can see there's a closed circuit present involving this light bulb, but this light bulb is connected in an open circuit configuration. We take a second alligator clip and also connect it to this light bulb, and we'll connect it to the negative of the original light bulb. As you can see now, both light bulbs are lighting up at full brightness. Now I'm going to take your attention to this display on the power supply. You can see we're drawing just under 3 amps. If I disconnect this light bulb, we draw about 1.5 amps. This is, the property of, uh, this is one of the properties of parallel circuits. The current in a parallel circuit is added as each element is, is added to the circuit, even though the voltage remains constant. Once again, we're up to 3 amps because we've basically doubled the resistive load on the circuit. I've reconnected the circuit in a series configuration, as you can see here. Once again, the bulbs are dimmer because the voltage across each bulb is lower. The current through the entire circuit remains the same, however, because the current flowing into one bulb or one node through one element also flows out and through the rest of the circuit around that same loop, per Kirchhoff's current law. Now let me demonstrate a phenomenon known as a short circuit. A short circuit is defined as a circuit in which a large portion of the current, or nearly all the current, is diverted through a shorter path around an element in the circuit. So here's one element in the circuit, and what I'm going to do is take this very low resistance copper wire with alligator clips, and I'm going to just connect it across the terminals of this light bulb. Let's observe what happens. I'm connecting one to this pin on the light bulb here, and I'll connect the other to this other pin. As you can see, this light bulb turned off, and this light bulb became considerably brighter. Additionally, the current increased slightly because this light bulb is now being subjected to a greater voltage. This is called a, sh a short circuit across this light bulb. No current is being allowed to flow this through this light bulb, even though it's still connected to the circuit, because a path of much lower resistance is connected in parallel with the bulb. Thus, nearly all of the current is allowed that this bulb desires or that this bulb draws is being allowed to flow through the short. That allows the full voltage, 10 volts, to appear across this light bulb. Let me prove that to you with the multimeter. If we take the multimeter and we measure let me get that so you can see it better. We can measure across this light bulb, and you see that we have about 9.4 volts across it. The negligible drop is due to resistance in the, in the alligator clips. But if we measure across this light bulb, you see only a very small amount of current represented by, or a very small amount of voltage represented by the small resistant, non-zero resistance of this conductor is present uh, across this bulb. This is the essence of a short circuit, when a very small voltage is allowed to persist across an element, and thus any current drawn by downstream elements is allowed to flow. So now I'm going to disconnect this light bulb here, the short circuit from this light bulb, I should say, and we'll watch that and see what happens. As you can see, this bulb has become much dimmer, and this one has begun glowing again. We're back to our series circuit configuration. Now, let me ask you, what do you predict would happen if, rather than shorting out just one light bulb, I were to short out the entire circuit by connecting the two outputs of the power supply directly together? Bearing in mind that this is a current limited power supply, it will only deliver 5 amps at maximum, let's find out and see what happens. So I've connected one lead to the black connection to the negative terminal, and now I'm going to connect the other lead to the red connection to the positive terminal. As you can see, both light bulbs have turned off. Additionally, the current on the power supply has gone all the way up to 5 amps. This is the maximum current that this power supply can deliver. Although it's at 5 amps, you'll notice that 
even you'll notice the voltages dropped much lower than the original 10 volts that we were supplying. This is because the power supply has entered current limiting mode and it's basically pulling the voltage as low as it needs to go to allow only five amps to flow. Ideally, this voltage would be zero in a true short circuit, but because these wires and the alligator clips connected to them have non-zero resistance, a small amount of voltage persists across the circuit. I'll disconnect this, and as you can see, the lights have turned back on. Current is now allowed to flow through the path of greater resistance. Now it's very important to note that short circuiting a power supply like I just did is really only safe to do in a current limited power supply such as this one. Other examples of current limited power supplies include batteries with internally high resistance like uh, carbon zinc batteries or power supplies with long high resistance power connections that will inherently limit the current supplied by them. If you take a power supply with a low current limit such as this bolt power car battery starter or car starter, you may find a considerably more hazardous situation present because this power supply can deliver in, in excess of 600 amps of current at 12 volts. And not only that, if the power supply is subjected to short circuit for a prolonged amount of time, the battery inside could catch fire. This is why it's important to only perform a short circuit on a circuit that either has other elements in series with it, like light bulbs, or has current limited power supply or current limited power source, like this one. I've set up a demonstration to show why you should never short circuit a power supply which does not have current limiting capabilities. I have 120 volts AC from the mains connected via this emergency fuse and this knife switch to an output receptacle. I'm going to take a piece of 30 gauge wire with loops at the end, and I'm going to insert it into this output receptacle here being sure to make good contact with the wiring inside, or with the contacts inside. Now I'm going to close the knife switch, and let's observe what happens when the current, or the voltage is applied to the wire with no way of limiting the current across it. Closing the knife switch. As you can see, there was a very large spark and a lot of arcing. You certainly wouldn't want that to be part of your circuit when you switch on your power supply. So now you have a basic overview of the different circuit conditions that you might encounter in your experiments. Now that you've seen these types of circuits, you can employ these and understand how these work in your future experiments. Thank you for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.